I'm your host, Gabby Minas, and our guest today, we're going to do a little bio on this person. <clears throat> we have Chris Burciaga, UTEP alum, who has a bachelor's in pre-law and multi-studies, and two masters, two masters, one in business administration and another in healthcare management. <clears throat> The awesome part, because he's an alumni, he previously played in the 2001-2002 UTEP football team, and he's also prior military in the U.S. Army. He has served for 13 years, so thank you for your service. Thank you for being in this morning. How are we feeling? You know, Gabby, doing pretty good. I, uh, we talked about weather the other day, and I ended up getting a sore throat, so <clears throat> no. uh, yeah, that time of year. Usually it happens oh, yeah. when I go to El Paso, but uh, I got it here, so yeah. I know, in El Paso, it's... I'm not going to toot our horn, but it's really beautiful here today. And I, I'm, I'm not trying to brag it, but it's gorgeous. So sure. because you have a sore throat, what are you sipping on this morning? Uh, Monster Reserve, white pineapple. <laughs> white pineapple. I have not heard that flavor. I didn't know there it was is, such thing as a white pineapple. Yeah, it's a, it's a new flavor. It's actually really good. So it's probably my favorite one out of the inventory they have. Oh, nice. And that sounds delicious. It's probably very easy to drink. I'm, just <laughs> sipping on a, I'm sipping on a tea, so get some tea and honey later for, for the allergies. Um, so I want to start off with a fun question, because I know we have a short period of time to get a lot of information in, and I'm hoping our audience, if you have any questions, put it in the chat. My fun question, since you are prior El Pasoan, you used to live here in El Paso, if you had to choose between Tacos Don Cuco or Chico's Tacos, what would you pick? <laughs> the 20-year-old version of me would have picked Chico's Tacos. Because it's quick, easy, yep. and it hits the spot. Oh, the almost 40-year-old yes, version of me now picks, <laughs> picks Don Cuckoo. I, I, you know, I, I go to El Paso now, and I, I enjoy the homemade Mexican cuisine. You don't get it in East Texas, North Texas, no. where I'm at, as, as, as available as, as it is in El Paso. So oh, yeah. 20 years ago, Chico was all day long. Today, you know, Don Cuckoo. Yeah, those are the, those are the good choice. I completely agree with that, and hopefully a lot of our – undergrad students watching also agree with that so chico's for the youngers and then as you get older you kind of migrate to the tacos don't go to the thing. No, you know <laughs> chico's doesn't close and when you're you know an undergrad student traditional student yep. and uh they're open late night they're open to, uh, to your schedule your convenience so yeah exactly absolutely. exactly wait that's a good way to say it so we're going to start by asking you because i also want to sh share what you're doing so can you tell us your journey and how healthcare support services kind of became your path because I know your bachelor's degrees in pre-law and, mil and military studies and your master's kind of shifted. So how did you get here? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the, in the Army, when you commission uh, ROTC program there at UTEP, you get your degree and you apply for certain jobs you want to do in the Army. You know, you list them mm -hmm. one to ten and then you get selected and the Army determines where you're going to go. So right. in uh, 2004, due to the need, in, you know, the war in Iraq, the need that the Army had, Almost all my UTEP grads, to include myself, we all ended up going to Medical Service Corps. Uh, okay. That's where, the, that's where the Army placed us. You know, some became physical therapists, some became hospital administrators. Mm -hmm. I went out and uh, I got my master's degree in healthcare management, and then I, yeah. <clears throat> I supported the, the Army, you know, uh, the Army Infantry Divisions from that point on. But how I got from there to here, you know, I, I left the Army in 2013, and uh, I started doing healthcare management, the clinical okay. side, and then, and then I started doing uh, operations and then, you know, led me to a COO job and I started doing that big picture. Mm -hmm. But I realized that I had a passion for the backbone of the hospital. You know, the, the backbone, the, the employees that are not in, in a surgical room, the employees that are not checking your vitals, yeah. but the, the employees that are vital to keeping you safe, you know, and that support services. People don't, don't, people don't think, well, does a housekeeper have to sterilize my operating room? Absolutely. If they're not in there cleaning that out, you can catch an infection and you can die of that. You know, mm -hmm. and so, so I built a passion for that, you know, and, uh, and that's kind of what led me here to, to the role I'm at now as the president uh, of, of healthcare for HHS. We're a support services company and all I deal with is back, you know, backbone operations in hospitals. So it's, it was a win-win for me. And I, because you mentioned your military service and how that kind of got you into the field. Mm -hmm. May I ask, were you enlisted or officer? So I was an officer. Uh, I, I did the ROTC program there at UTEP. I commissioned and, and went to the medical service corps. Uh, I was a reservist for it. a small period of time there in El Paso. Mm -hmm. I started off as a military police officer on Fort Bliss and, and uh, one of the reserve units. And then I moved into active duty as a medical service corps officer. 
that's just fantastic. I wanted to ask, and I appreciate that and you sharing that journey because um, going from student to army to medical to services, to, it's just a huge a bounce around. And I love that you're sharing that because that's kind of how the journey sometimes happen is just you bounce around. Um, but it sounds the healthcare service field is very supportive. It's, it pretty much keeps a lot of the things running. So that way the medical um, teams and the doctors and the PTs and the OTs and nurses can continue right. their purpose. So I love that you said that's the backbone. It's what keeps it kind of the foundation of the hospitals or the, and the clinics and everything. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if a surgeon doesn't have tools to operate, yeah. they can't operate. You know, that takes someone in the, back, in the background, a materials management leader to do that. If the operating rooms are not clean, they can't operate. Same thing on mm -hmm. the patient floors. You know, if they don't have the materials, the beds, the cleanliness, the dietary, the food part, patients can't get better. So it's the backbone of the hospital. And what's cool about it that many people don't know is you don't have to have a healthcare degree to do that. What? So, yeah, you know, the yeah. companies like mine, you know, we, we train you. As long as you come in with the soft skills that we're looking for, uh, exactly. and you're willing to learn. You know, I have people that work with for me that have finance degrees, electrical engineering degrees, hospitality degrees. I mean, they uh, I've had a lot of talent in the last few years that said, hey, I want to sell. I want to help fight the war on COVID. How do I do that? Well, come on over. Try this out. So we, we could grab you from whatever degree platform you're in. Uh, we put you through an academy. We train you. Mm -hmm. We make you an assistant director anywhere from six months to a year. If you show progress, then you pick up a director job and, you know, there you go. You start a career in support services. And that's, I think that's such an awesome opportunity. And I like how you mentioned all the different degrees that go into it. And I feel like having a different degree sometimes benefits you or supports you in different roles that you feel because you don't have that background, you don't, you're not equipped for that position. Right. But sometimes having that engineering background and then going into healthcare and tying those things are things that other people don't see. So you bring value in that as well. So I appreciate Absolutely. you sharing that. You know, the big thing I like is, especially in schools like UTEP, uh, you know, as an El Pasoan, man, you're raised in a, in a different culture than most of the cities in Texas, right. most of the cities in the United States. And El Pasoans, UTEP students are very humble. You know, they, they like to work hard. They understand the culture. They understand people. And for me, the success yeah. I've had of hiring UTEP grads has been phenomenal. You know, they, they come in eager to learn. A lot of first-generation graduates that, that want to yes. get, you know, pro become professionals. I, I enjoy it. You know, any, anybody from the UTEP community that wants to come out and do this, if you send, you know, send them our information, I'd be more than happy to interview oh, yeah. them and, and, and get people going. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Look, you're offering jobs on the Instagram <laughs> Live. <laughs> Just saying, so you can reach out to the Career Center, we'll connect you, or I'm going to put his LinkedIn information at the end. If you're interested in this kind of field, or at least learning about it, or just talking to Chris about it, like just not even, maybe if you're not looking for a job right now, but just talking about it for a future opportunity as well. So thank you for sharing your journey as to yeah. how you got there. How so you... a, a quick Go secret, ahead. we have hospitals from Key West to Alaska, and we have an international okay. division now that does Europe, uh, Asia. South America. So we're, we're a global company. Uh, awesome. and we not just do healthcare. We also do senior living resorts. Uh, we also do government entities. So we grow 50% every five years. Guys, I have jobs. If you guys want to work after you graduate, <laughs> please let me know. I know. Let me hire you. I want to, oh, I'm trying not to be too loud. I do want to say thank you so much for saying that. And that's why I love bringing alumni on here. And I love having that kind of trying to give a connection to our students because sometimes you don't see past your degree, like you're like, this is what I have to do. And then when you don't do it, you're just kind of at a loss. What do I do now? And there's other areas to look into. So I'm so glad you shared that. I'm so glad you're letting our students know that there are opportunities around the globe with this kind of, of uh, a career. Um, so I want to kind of reflect back on you and your undergraduate years. Yeah. What are some skills you learned that helped you in your current role? Because you did study, I'm going to mention it again, you studied pre-law and multi military studies. What helped you from your undergrad years to what you're doing now? Well, you know what you learn in military science, um, especially there at UTEP, being a, a multicultural landing spot for soldiers mm -hmm. from Fort Bliss, you learn to be humble. You know, you, you learn to serve others. You learn to, to, to be an advocate for your community. I mean, that's what most military officers join they, to do that. Uh, you know, in my time there at UTEP, uh, I mean, I, I learned time management. I learned, you know, the, to be humble, to be, you know, the humility of like being in the El Paso culture. And, and, you know, and being in the pre-law program uh, there at UTEP and studying, you know, political science in that arena as well, 
uh, you learn about the geopolitical culture of the region. I mean, El Paso right. is a melting pot from Mexico, Texas, kind of all over. And I mean, being in El Paso, and you learn you learn that, yeah. and that's and that's something you can't learn in other places. I agree. I completely agree. I like the fact that she said <clears throat> melting pot. We have such diverse cultures, and sometimes you come and you're like, no, it's all Hispanic. No, we have so we are a Hispanic serving institute in the top one. One of the top ones. So right, right. it's it but it's so diverse. There's so many cultures and it's beautiful to see all the cultures kind of mix. And thank you for sharing that and how your undergrad years kind of gave you that humility, the the work ethic, the the drive and the ability to communicate with other kinds of cultures and learning how to become that di what is it um, evolving, adapting kind of character. Uh, and I know you said you mentioned the military services and studies also help in your military career. I'm pretty sure helped as well uh, during those ROTC years in your undergrad as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So my next question, because again, if students want to go in this field, what are some key skills that are needed to thrive in the healthcare support services world? So what are some big ones that you're like, we need this, this, and this? I'm going to be upfront. Soft skills. You know, uh, the healthcare industry is a consumer based industry meaning that you have options. You know, you have the option to, to go to any hospital to, you know, to have a baby, to have your surgery. You're not told where to go. You know, you have that option as a consumer. So mm -hmm. in, today, in today's competitive world, the hospitals that generate better business are, are, are the ones that have phenomenal staff, phenomenal physicians, nurses, support services. Yes. So for, for yes. us, it's, it's learning, it's bringing the soft skills. You know, can you smile? Are you open to, to lead, mentor, develop? Can you coach? You, you don't have to have years of experience, but you got to be able to have those traits. We can mm -hmm. develop those. We can, we can develop the experience. Uh, unfortunately, though, we can't develop the soft skills. It's either you come to the table with that or, or you don't. And, and for yeah. me, that's, that's my big hiring factor uh, at all levels from, you know, the executive vice president down to the, the hourly housekeeper or support services team member. Do they have the ability just to warm up a room with a sick, with a sick patient in it? And if, if you can do that, then this is a career for you. And you know what? I, since you are, I love that you're saying those key skills and that you actually are in those interview rooms. And I'm going to ask the question. If, if you were to go into an interview room, what are some things you notice? Or since you said you're looking for specific things, let's say that they, before they even speak, what are things you notice about someone who walks into your interview room that you think students need to be aware of? Eye contact. First okay. thing first, yep. Do you acknowledge the person? Do you acknowledge the person walking in the room? Uh, okay. Do you stand up to shake their hand? You know, and then at that point, that that shows for me that shows that you want to be part of the round table. You want to be equal, uh, oh, and yeah. if you could do that right out the gate, yeah, I mean, you're gonna have a great interview. Okay, so eye contact, and I like the fact standing up if you're sitting, standing up for to shake their hand or whatever accommodation you guys are doing at that right, point. Right. Um, can I ask about the virtual? Have you done virtual interviews and what have, do you recommend yeah. there? How are those yeah. different? What are things? So virtual interviews throw people off. You know, they're not used to seeing themselves on a camera. Yeah. Uh, it weirds them out. And then it's yeah. either they get really chatty or they, they don't talk. Uh, just be yourself. You know, I, I think employers know that virtual interviews are awkward to some people. Uh, just be yourself. Try to smile. Um, Set your phone up at a good distance so that you're not, you know, they're not seeing, you know, uh, they're not seeing the pores in your skin, but yeah. you're not, you're not so far out in a distance that they can't see the gestures, you. you know, or, or hear you. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, set up in a good, in, in, a, in a good distance and just be yourself. They know, you know, you're nervous. They know for many yeah. students, this is their first time. Uh, but if you do that, you'll be just fine. Okay. So I like, there were several things you said. I'm going to say eye contact was a big one. If you're in person, standing up to shake their hand. Uh, if it's virtual, just smiling and making yourself comfortable in the room, the virtual room. You're physically in a place you selected as a comfort area that's clean and clear and it's calm. So, I almost said, anyway. Um, so I, I, I like that you said that, like when you come onto the screen, be comfortable, be yourself. It's just you and them. And it, it, I guess it is just a little funky to see yourself on the screen um, <laughs> and getting used to that. Uh, I did want to bring up that you mentioned multiple times smiling, smiling. What do you mean by that? Can you, can you kind of tell me more about what you mean as a recruiter, as an employee looking for people? So what yeah, the importance absolutely. of smiling? Yeah, absolutely. So in healthcare, it, it, it's about making every patient feel welcomed. 
Yeah. Uh, you got a lot of sick patients, you know, from COVID to cancers to even brand new moms, you know, and a warm smile goes a long way. It, it makes them feel comfortable. It makes them feel part of that team, that treatment team. Uh, if, if you can't smile in healthcare, it, it's tough. You know, yeah. I, I mean, just a, a basic warm smile opens up the room. So uh, for me, that's important. I agree. So smiling is in, in healthcare anywhere but uh, is extremely important. And I like how you mentioned a little while back, smiling, if you were the first person they come into the hospital to see, because it is, you are serving them as a customer, essentially, and you want them to be at your hospital, at your clinic, you want to support them. Having that front desk person, the first person they interact, have a smile all the way till their discharge papers, have that energy, have that light uh, throughout Absolutely. the whole experience. So I wanted to bring that in, because I know you mentioned it, and I want to tie it in with a smiling. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and I wanted to, we're getting close on the time. So my, this is literally my last question. So I'm excited. If students are interested in the roles and these roles that you're talking about, uh, what are some tips you can offer them to succeed in getting the position as well as staying in the position? Yeah, absolutely. So at this level, if you're an undergrad student or a graduate student here at UTEP and support services, healthcare administration is something you want to do. I would tell you here today, join organizations. Uh, you know, Gabby, what I told you the other day, uh, mm -hmm. The National Association of Latino Healthcare Executives, NALI, yes. uh, they're great at developing junior leaders, college, you know, uh, soon to be college graduates in, into, the, into future roles. I would do that now. Get mentored, you know, by, by healthcare leaders, administrators, you know, doctors, nurses. Do that now. Get comfortable in the field. And then, you know, once, you, once you're part of that family, that circle, it becomes easier once you graduate. Uh, and then, you know, once you graduate, go out and look for it. You know, uh, there's opportunities yep. everywhere. There's companies like mine, like HHS, that'll, that'll train you in everything you need to know. Uh, you come out, you join a company like ours, and uh, the sky's the limit. I, that's, thank you for sharing that. So joining the organization, getting started now. Uh, talking with people. I do want to share that uh, Chris Bursiaga is on LinkedIn. And that's one of the reasons, that's another way that him and I connected um, as alumni as well, because he's a UTEP alum. Um, and just LinkedIn is such a great opportunity. And I wanted to, I know we, we're getting close on time. I wanted to ask you, Chris, as someone who's constantly looking to hire students or people for these positions, has LinkedIn been beneficial? How do you use it to look, do you use it to look for people? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I, I post quite a bit. I post a lot of my company information yeah. online. Um, whenever they, they send out marketing events, uh, just things for the month, I, you know, I give it a thumbs up. But also, if you're a student and, and you're looking to come work for companies like mine, uh, follow. Follow the company. You know, put it on your yes. profile that you're open to hire. Let us know that you're out there. You know, and, uh, and, and LinkedIn does work. I've hired a lot of people through LinkedIn. I've networked with a lot of people through LinkedIn, Love it. but uh, yeah, I mean, develop your profile, make sure it's appropriate, a nice, you know, a nice photo of yourself on the screen, and then make sure you list yourself open to hire, and then follow companies like mine, and some, someone will reach out. It's a matter of time. I I love it, and thank you. We tell students it's always good to hear it from another voice that's not ours at the Career Center. Uh, so I want to wrap up our, our interview with the last tips before we leave. Chris, do you have any last tips for students who are looking to engage or talk with you or about this kind of field? Yeah, you know, uh, healthcare, healthcare is, is more than a Monday to Friday, eight to five job. I, I don't want to mislead people and, and make them believe that healthcare is that type of environment, especially with young grads that have not been exposed. Uh, the treatment right. of patients is, 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 a, is a good career. It, it's a rewarding career, but it's also demanding. So if healthcare is something you're looking to do in the future, uh, just be aware, you know, you're, 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 you can't walk into an interview and expect to work nine to four, nine to five. It ain't going to happen in healthcare, not, not, on, not in our models. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're willing to work hard, you're willing to invest your time, you're willing to learn, man, the sky is the limit and there, there's no need to worry, especially, you know, in, in, in a support services career. And I really feel that our UTEP minors, like you had said, are, have that drive and that, that motivation, that humility to work hard and have that work ethic. So Absolutely. I that. mean, El Paso community is a hardworking community. That's a known fact. You know, some yes. of the, the some of our, our, our great uh, leaders that come out of El Paso are our employees, the people there. I mean, that's a hardworking culture, you know, cultural city. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Guys, El Paso, if you want to come work for us, please let me know. I would be more than happy to yes. give you an interview. Yes. Thank you, Chris. And so I want to wrap up for those who are joining us right now. 
uh, we had spoken about um, careers in healthcare support services and what to do, how Chris got there. He has his journey from UTEP, football, US Army, uh, and then diving into this field and has been there and how the key skills you need are soft skills, which is something that a lot of students don't consider is your soft skills, the ability to, to have eye contact. You talked about smiling, having that energy of wanting to be somewhere. And when you walk into that interview room, having that confidence, that approachability, um, and more importantly, I, I love how you just emphasize smiling, 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 smiling. I think Absolutely. that works wonders in healthcare. And the last tip, I do love that last tip about healthcare. It, it's not a nine to five. And I think healthcare and education are kind of like that. It's not a nine to five. It just, you're ready to go all the time. And if you love it Absolutely. and you're passionate about it, just like Chris, you're going to succeed and thrive in that field. So thank you so much, Chris, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. We're going to end off with a little clink. Do you have your monster? Uh, I do. Have a good one, <laughs> Cheers. Guys. Cheers. Thank you so much. Go Miners. And we'll see you next week. You have a good one. Thank you. Bye, Chris. Thank you.